Hi, I'm Lucy James, and I listen to the One Up Gaming podcast. Hi, I'm Keith Allen, and I play Murphy on Z Nation, and I listen to One Up Gaming podcast. Hi, Justin the Voice here. First of all, we'd like to thank you for listening. Seriously. We really like it when you listen. Yes. But if you'd like to do more than just listen, if you'd like to help us out, well, we have an idea just for you. Visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash O-U-G. Your monthly micropayment will help us keep going all night long, baby. Oh, yeah. Mostly because we usually record at night. Yeah. But don't worry, baby. We got something for you, too. We've got special benefits for all of our Patreon subscribers. Yeah. Again, that's www.patreon.com slash O-U-G. Welcome to our podcast. We've got a lot to say about all the latest games you're going to want to play. We'll tell you what's on Xbox, PS3, PC, and more. We'll chat about some random stuff to you rolling on the floor. This is One Up Gaming. Sit back and grab a drink. It's time to give a listen to what we have to think. It's One Up Gaming. It's episode 201. It's me, David. And this week we've found Zach. Hello, everyone. I'm back. (laughs) (laughs) After... A self exodus. I don't even know where I've been. No, you probably fell under the rock where Sean is. Probably, yeah. I've been <laughs> hanging out with Sean. Um, I don't suppose you've heard from Sean I've recently. Not, no. Yeah. I wonder what he's up to. At occasionally, his Facebook page gets updated with a new picture, but I don't. He's, he, I don't. he's, he's a solitary man. He is. He is. Yes. Very solitary. You should check out my old podcast, A Solitary Gamer. <laughs> what if it was just like it was just like every week? It was just one hour of dead air. <laughs> 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 it would maybe like a sentence somewhere, but you have to find it. So I don't know if you ever heard it, or not, but I, I I paid someone to make a theme song for it. And it's really slow music with I'm so alone. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I, I wish I had oh time to keep it going. It was brilliant. It's the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Perhaps I might track it down. Have a little look. Have a little listen. I think there's only like five episodes done. <laughs> But they were the best That's five it. episodes of any podcast ever. Considering there was only a few done, I think Sean was on two of them. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. He's got a better hit rate on that than he does on ours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Zach, did you watch the FA Cup final? I did. I'm, I am very, very happy. As I'm, I'm an Arsenal fan. And oh yeah, I'm I'm thrilled. <laughs> two uh, yeah, two one, two one victory. Yeah, I'm well happy. Oh, it, it should have been more. We should have scored more. Um, I think Özil missed an absolute sitter towards the end of the match. Rambo missed and uh, missed one. Rambo. Oh Ramsey, so I call, we call him Rambo. We we guns, you know. <laughs> um. It was a good game, though. It was a really, really good game. Um, as as an Arsenal fan, I was, like, pulling my hair out. But I imagine if you was a neutral watching it, you'd have had a great time. Do you reckon? Yeah. It was, it was like, proper end-to-end enter, enter stuff. And the commentators kept saying, oh, it's like a... It's like a basketball match. <laughs> I watched the second <laughs> half. And it seemed quite fun. The first half was a bit better, I think. Um, second half... Well, I don't know. The second half, Chelsea were better. The first half, they were all over the place. Um, and when... 
and they were probably they were probably going to get back in in it until um, Moses got sent off. The diver. Yeah, he. Oh my god, it's such a bad dive. Oh, in honesty, I thought it was a penalty. <laughs> I, I, when it, when the whistle went, I was like, oh my god, here we go. This is where Chelsea get back in the game, and then um, he got sent off, and I was like, yes, they scored um, later on, but then. We managed to score. I, I wasn't even looking at the TV, and, and we managed to score again. And I was, I was like cheering. I think it was only about twenty <laughs> seconds up. after the kickoff. Yeah. Sort of thing went straight out. Yeah. And um, crazy. If they still had eleven men, they they could have probably come back and won it. But I think sheer numbers got us through. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think towards the end, you did have a couple of chances. Like Ramsey headed <sighs> it when it bounced yeah. off the. Ozil, oh my god. He missed an absolute sitter. Um, and then even right at the end, the, um, the, oh God, the, the one that's got, is a defensive midfielder, El Hamadi? El? Oh yeah, El Nenny. El, yeah. yeah. He sort of like, instead of like shooting, he tried to stop, turn around and know, pass it back. It's the, <laughs> he was, he'd just come on. He was substituted on, on like the 18, 89th minute or something. So he has all the energy. He comes up against a defender who's been playing the entire game. All he has to do is just run past him because he's got 90 minutes of <laughs> fatigue on his side and he tries to turn him and just ruins it. He just messes it up. Um, yeah. And we had like, we had a defensive midfielder, Coquelin, playing left wing back, which was just, yeah, he just looked terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, like a real makeshift team. Um, is it Mertesacker played? He played ninety minutes of FA Cup final football, and he for the rest of the season he played like thirty-seven minutes mm. for an entire season, and then he and then he played in the, in the FA Cup final, and somehow played amazing. <laughs> I was going to say that from what I heard, he this sort of said that he played amazingly well. Yeah, <laughs> it came to a surprise to everyone. But well, I think. He sort of like suits that role. Yeah, absolutely. That that centre being um, the centre where it doesn't role. matter yeah. about pace. Yeah, you just have to be a like a, a solid wall, and that's yeah. what he is. He's just a like a seven foot brick shouse. Is it me or has he lost a lot of weight? He looked really skinny. He does look. I've I've always thought he does look really thin. Um, Especially for a I defender. Think he's always been like that. I think he's. Just, I think he. I think he also looks quite old now. <laughs> then again, I think he probably is. Thirty-two, I think. But um, but he hasn't played either, so um, I don't know if because he's been out for so long. I don't know if um, he's like lost body mass from not playing regularly or something. I don't know. I'm not, I'm I was, not, I'm I was just quite <laughs> shocked when I saw how skinny he was. When all the other sort of defenders are like. Six foot five and like twenty stone, you know, this massive yeah, meathead. Yeah. He's just he's just a lamppost yeah. who just falls down in front of defenders. He did it he did it so many times. He just falls down in front of um like Diego Costa or Hazard and managed to tackle it to get the ball away. That's all you want. <laughs> but yeah, I'm well happy. All the all the all the players uh, played really, really well, so it makes me it makes me mad. A little bit that we can play like that for the entire season, but uh, so that's what an FA Cup final will do for you. Will do to you, make you play good. But then again, I think I think Chelsea didn't help themselves. Did I think they played quite poorly? Yeah, they, overall they came, out, they came out really like lethargically. Um, I don't know if like they were just a little bit complacent after winning the title, or maybe like winning the title like after coming off that high. It's hard to motivate yourself so soon for a for a, an FA Cup final. Um, I think, and Arsenal just started so quickly, probably motivated by the fact that this was the last chance to like save something for the season. Mm. Yeah, and they just hit him hard, and that, and then they conceded it in like four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, for, did you see the 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 first goal? Yeah, the handball and maybe the offside. And... Handball, maybe offside. It was like the most controversial goal. <laughs> Perfect for an FA Cup final. It was amazing. <laughs> I was like, I was as soon as it, ha- it went in, I jumped up off my chair and was like standing, just like waiting for the referee to give it. I didn't know what to do. I was like, should I celebrate? Should I celebrate? And then they went after the, to the linesman. I was like, it was just dead silent. 
get to go. Yeah! <laughs> but yeah, I think it was Hannibal. Sanchez got away with that. Yeah, so at least you're a happy boy. I am very happy. Good. So, Zach, what have you been playing? Right. So, recently, I, I've i got back into um, FIFA Ultimate Team. <laughs> um, I have actually started playing Ultimate Team um, by tr- and trying to build a team. So, yeah, I used to just play the draft mode over and over and over again because draft mode is hilarious fun. Um, but now I'm actually trying to make a team, which is really, really hard because I don't want to put any money into the actual game. I don't I know want... what draft mode is. <laughs> so draft mode is... Um, you know what ultimate team is, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in- instead, uh, you pay like 15,000 coins and um, you cho- you're choose. you given like a choice of five formations. You, you choose your form- formation and then um, you select your players by selecting a position and it will give you um, a selection of five players and you have to choose which one you want and they're all randomized so then um, uh, so you put together this team out of random players and hope that something good comes out of it and then you get paired off to play I think there's four rounds you play Last last sixteen quarter final semi final final and if you win you win loads and loads of uh, packs and stuff. You're in. And the it was money. always really really You're good in fun. The money. Yeah, it, even though um, a lot of uh, all the players are, like randomized, um, you were always given really really good teams. So you never you never feel like your teams are players. Uh, players. Sorry, <laughs> you're always given really good players. So you never feel like you're at a disadvantage naturally um you always have like a neymar or a ronaldo or a messi in your team always <laughs> i tell you is the you said what it was called the ultimate team ultimate team is that similar to my experience when i played pro evo uh, pez i think it was last year's version their sort of version of it where you get your players and your cards and whatnot yeah yeah where because I was technically quite good at the game but wouldn't put money in, my s- squad and overall stars was like 65 or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I was playing against other people who their s- sort of like <clears throat> play-, play rating was at the same standard as mine. But they must have put money in because they had all like 95 players. Yeah. <laughs> and it just really annoyed me. Pretty much, yeah. It's exactly the same. The I, entire game is geared up, up yeah. towards pay to win. Um, yeah. But thankfully with FIFA, it's really, really easy to beat someone who's less good than you. And I don't know how they do it in PES, but um, in FIFA, they have this division system where as soon as you start the game, you're stuck in Division 10. That's where you are. And then you have... Um, I think it's like 10 games in a season. And 10, 12 games in a season, something like that. And if you win a certain amount of games, you get promoted to Division 9. If you win a certain amount of games, you get promoted to Division 8, and it goes on and on like that. So... Um, as soon as you start in FIFA, you are highly likely to be playing people who are either worse than you or roughly around the same skill set as you. Especially now, now, um, ne- this time in the season, because anyone who's good at FIFA has already progressed up to Division One. <laughs> so I've I've just been like shooting up the division <laughs> because I've only just started playing it. Um, I've played like. 30 games, I think, and I've won, like, 25. <laughs> <laughs> and even, and a lot of the time, I get paired up with people who have teams infinitely better than mine, but I just, I'm just better than them, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Ooh, so, da-de-da. I know. Like, I have, like, a team 
consisting of Jonathan Caleri, the the West Ham on loan striker, who's rubbish. I have like, never heard of him. <laughs> I know he's terrible. And Jermaine Defoe as my strikers. I have Markovic as my winger, <laughs> and um, I have Will Keane and John Stones as my centre backs. Will uh, Keane. Uh, no, so not Will Keane. Michael. Michael Keane. Sorry, yeah. Isn't Will, Will Keane's Keane the striker? Is... I think isn't he the one that's? Isn't he like his brother or something? Yeah, he's. I, I think he's still at Man U actually. I have no idea. Anyway, um, and I have like Ben Davis and Kieran Trippier as my two wing backs and stuff. <laughs> it's a little bit. It's like a decent team, but it's nowhere near a good team. Uh so, and I just went through the marketplace. I mean, I think the good thing about it is that I have 100% chemistry. Um, yeah. So if you have all your players playing in the same league or, or they're all the same nationality, they their stats, I don't know how it works, but if your team has a low chemistry, their passes like go wayward and stuff and their shooting's worse. If you have a high chemistry, that doesn't happen. I don't know if it's boosted, if it's a high chemistry, or if it's lowered, if it's a low chemistry, or a mixture of both. I don't know how it works. But I have that to my advantage. So I just went through the transfer market, and with li- the little coins I had, I built this Premier League team full of, like, the <laughs> all from all the teams in the bottom half of the league. <laughs> <laughs> I played loads of games, and I'm slowly upgrading my team. <laughs> Isn't so that I- what Celtic did, and they've just done, like, the triple or something? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Unfortunately, in... Ultimate Team, no one else does that. That's the, like, the, the really frustrating thing about Ultimate Team is that the idea of like starting off with a lower band of players and then slowly upgrading them one by one is a really nice idea. But then you can just, or you can just stick a hundred quid in and get loads and loads of gold packs and hopefully you'll get a team of the season or something like that. My brother um, actually got, um, I think it was Team of the Season Ronaldo. He just opened a pack and got it. <laughs> Not bad, is it? And one day I just heard him shouting from his room, oh my god, oh my god, and then he sold it for like three million coins or something. So, you know, he's just got loads and loads of money. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so I've been playing that. And um, today, yesterday actually, I, I've i been buying loads of games from the PlayStation Store because the PlayStation Store has been really good with deals recently. Um... I keep buying games that I already own <laughs> because <laughs> I'm lazy like that. That way I don't have to like reach across my desk to change the discs because it's like five quid on the store. So I bought Alien Isolation again <laughs> and I've been playing it for the last couple of days and it's just yeah, fantastic. What a game. Love it. Getting killed by aliens is the best thing. I rebought yeah, games yes. that I had for the Xbox One onto my PS4 just because my PS, my Xbox One doesn't work. <laughs> That's understandable. Yeah, I get that. Um, so I've, I've also bought like there's the Mo- the Marvel Ultimate Alliance games. They came they they came out on PC and Xbox One and PS4 like a few months ago. Yeah, the you got like one and two, didn't you? Yeah, you I've got buy them just separate. You could get them as, as, I, as yeah. Pair. I bought the second one because I played the first one to death, and mm. I don't want to play it again because I'll be so bored. And I bought I bought the dead I bought Dead Island again, <laughs> but this time on play, play PS4 instead of Xbox 360. I don't know why because I've got Dying Light here, which is like infinitely better. Um, what else did I buy? There's the new Sherlock Holmes game. Um, like the Devil's Daughter or something, and I, I hear that they, the Sherlock Holmes games are quite good, and I've been reading them, so I was like, yeah, why not? It was like ten quid as well. <laughs> so don't buy that. Um, I'll tell you what I did play recently, and then I'll end it, end my segment. Um, me and my friend Charlie have this thing for walking simulators, and we like to play them. So like Firewatch, uh, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, stuff like that. And a new one came out on the PlayStation Store um, called Kona. K-O-N-A. Kona. And, and, <laughs> and oh, my, oh, my friend Charlie was like, 
he watches um, loads of video game channels on uh, YouTube, um, like PewDiePie and all that kind of stuff. And he'd heard about this Kona game, too, so uh, he uh, told me about it, and we both bought it. Oh, hello, it's Ed- Eddie's joined. Hello, I'm back. Hey, Eddie, how's it going? Oh, it's, it's great, it's great. Comic Con was great. Get Even was even better. I have so much to talk about, man. I'm just full of knowledge. Full of knowledge. Yeah. Cool. Well, tough. I'm I'm speaking now, Eddie, okay? So if if you're full of knowledge, (laughs) what have you done with the real Eddie? (laughs) I'm I'm back. I'm back one minute. That's already out here. Damn, okay. I feel hurt. (laughs) I know this is something that no one else really cares about, and you've explained this before, but what the hell is that picture, Eddie? Oh, my pick, basically. It looks like a hedgehog. Uh, like wait, which... <laughs> you know, you know what, I don't even know. It was like a furry about. chicken or something. A furry chicken. Oh, right, yeah, I made that in, um... I made that in college. It was weird. It was a weird <laughs> time. They just said make something, so I was like, sure. I'll it just a add a bunch of cylinders together. <laughs> it was weird, man. It was weird. But, yeah... He's a furry. He's a furry once. That's great. He, he's missing most of his teeth, though. <laughs> like, I can't even see where the mouth is. <laughs> he doesn't. The thing is, he doesn't understand what is food and what is just a stone. So <laughs> you know, he just bites into anything. <laughs> oh my god! But, like, okay, Zach. <laughs> Zach, what what have you what have you been playing? Tell, tell oh, me yes. about the so, plethora of games. So. Uh, me and my friend Charlie have this thing for walking simulators play loads of walking simulators new one came out on Playstation a couple of weeks ago called Kona which is about a man in uh, Canada and um, it's basically a, a, like a really good case study in why in how to make a really bad walking simulator so <laughs> It's 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 set in Canada, and you you play a, a detective going to like some small town, and then you find out someone gets murdered, and then you got to follow them around, like for follow that go around the village and like figure out what happened, and um, it just it has all of the basic walking simulator stuff done okay. So you walk around this village. Um, after all the events have happened, you try to piece together everything that everything has happened. But um, it did it all in such a really annoyingly boring way, and it just drove me absolutely mad. And then it had a really bad plot twist, um, which occurred about four hours into the game, and then after the plot twist, the game just ended, and it made me really, really angry. <laughs> Wait, and so like, what, what, level po- what level plot twist was it? Was it like, was you know, level plot twist? Shyamalan? Was it like Shyamalan plot twist? It was... Or was it like Inception plot twist? It, I don't think it was even, because I think Shyamalan tries to make really interesting plot twists, and he did it for sometimes. It's just like sometimes they're really wide off the mark, and he thinks they're really interesting, but... I think he just communicates them really, really badly. Whereas this plot twist was just like it. Um, <laughs> it's it was okay, quite obvious what was actually going to happen, to be honest. And it's then, all right. Just spoil the game. It's a walking simulator. No one's going to play it. It's a fair point. If you like, yeah. If you if you, you really want to play it, and I really hi- highly advise you don't um, turn down now. <laughs> so everyone in the in in the in this village is dying, and you have to figure out why. And then it turns out there's like this magical ice monster going around freezing everybody. (laughs) And then when you find it, you try to kill it, you can't. So you get in a boat, drive away, and the game ends. (laughs) Wait, what? Wait, wait, what? So basically, you find out that there's a magical ice monster killing people and your solution is, fuck this shit, I'm out. Yeah, that was it. And I was like... Was your character black? It's a very important question. (laughs) Was your character black? Is, is he a black guy? Um, it makes complete sense. No, I don't think he was. I don't remember because walking simulators don't tend to like reveal what character you are. There's and no reflection at all. 
There was no yeah. reflections or anything like that. Um, this makes no sense. Why would... It was just... It was a really bad t- plot twist. And... <laughs> um, oh. it, it did this really annoying voiceover. Um, so every time you find something or uh, you enter a new area or something, there was this Canadian man voiceover who would tell you what your character was thinking. His name was Carl. And um, he was he was really goofy. The, he, the way he was talking, he was kind of like telling it in a really jovial kind of, isn't this like a really nice adventure kind of way? And throughout the entire thing, I was like, no, people are dying. <laughs> <laughs> literally in the first five minutes of the game you find a dead body and this guy's like joking about how cold it is and it yeah. just made me really mad especially because like with wolf walking simulators there's like there's a really if done right um the periods of silence where you're like moving between different places can be used to for the player to just sort of try and put clues together and kind of create their own theories on what's happening and instead, you had this Canadian voiceover telling you what to think all the time. And it was really, really frustrating. And it kind of made the entire thing um, less interactive, which is what, really, video games are great at doing. Wow. Again, which made me really, really mad. And when my friend found out the plot twist, he he went absolutely ballistic as well. <laughs> this, makes very, this makes no sense. So instead of trying to find a way to so, kill it, you just run. Yeah, and then I got a trophy for shooting it, and it was like, oh, no, you can't kill it. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, What's the point? What the, exactly, what the yeah, the like, there's, the no, entire game? there's no, like, moral to it. There was no point to the story. You know, um, if there's not a really good sequel, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> be like, oh, he comes back with, like, the whole Canadian <laughs> army or something. <laughs> Because yeah. if it doesn't, this is some bullshit. It was just like, I think as well, um, the only thing I can assume is that in Canada, there must be some kind of like urban legend about ice monsters or something because it was so out of left field. It was just, it just happened. There was no kind of... <laughs> Well, there were a few clues along the way, but they weren't exactly pointing towards a magical frost giant appearing out of nowhere. And then, I, 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 like, ca- punching Canada's things. weird. Canada's a weird place. It is I, a weird place. I'm actually going there in August. So oh, God. If I, if I find a magical ice monster... So, I, like, if you just die... the owner of all of its mis- misfortune or wrongdoings, rather... Wait, so if you just die, like, you know, get frozen to death, we know why. Exactly. What, what you need to do, oh, Zach, because all Canadians have a really good sense of humour, on your ringtone of your phone, have the South Park, the movie, Foot Canada. Blame Canada. Oh. Uh, whatever it was, yeah, just... Blame Canada! Yeah, just Blame have that. I, think, I actually think if you do that, you're going to be the first person to get their ass kicked in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think that you know the first one <laughs> your ass kicked in Canada and it's yeah, not during probably. hockey match yeah probably Just I don't, don't think I'll do that but then I had a, Kona had a, a, a slightly interesting um survival element to it so that you had you had to keep warm all of the time so whenever you go into like a new house you could like start a fire and it would warm you up which would allow your character to move quicker Wait, so you're um, just going into random people's houses starting fires? Pretty much. That's what you're doing, Fucking yeah. Fucking awesomeness right there. And uh, right. there was one really annoying part where you start off in a car and you're driving along. And then later on you find um, a snowmobile. And throughout the entire game I was collecting loads of resources. So I was putting them all in my car. And then I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all my stuff in the snowmobile because I've got a snowmobile and they can go faster in snow than the car. So I was taking everything out of the car and putting them in the snowmobile. But when I kept going back to the car... It never felt like the the amount of items was going down. Um, and I did it loads, loads, loads and loads of times, and then I realised that the inventory space was shared between the car and the snowmobile, and I spent about twenty minutes trying to transfer them from one to the other. 
that makes <laughs> Wait, but why, but why would the storage be the same in a car? I don't, as, I don't know. It makes no sense. <laughs> this was what I was I thinking. Understand. I would kind of understand it. Like, oh, you, you want to, if you have something in the car, but you, and, oh, you forgot to transfer it in the snowmobile, no need to worry, they're the same storage. I get that. But I think a car is a bit bigger than a snowmobile. Just a bit. Just yeah, a little bit. bit. Just, just a bit. So, you know, just make, again, makes no sense. First, the snow monster. Now shitty storage, and you set people's houses on fire. This game is this game is something else. This game is something else. Yeah, it was it was not a fun time. However, I, I said this to my friend. Like, um, since we're like we're big fans of uh, walking simulators, we really really liked uh, everybody's gone to, gone to the rapture and Firewatch. Um, they were our two favorite ones. Uh, we're big fans of like Life is Strange, stuff like that. It's it was a really really interesting look at what makes a really bad walking simulator because a lot of people would dismiss the fact that walking simulators are good from from a, because they people just don't like them. Um, but now I can definitively say that Kona is an, is a bad example of what a walking simulator is, and I can tell mm-hmm. you why and. These are the reasons why Firewatch and Everybody's Got to the Rapture have just did it better. So I'm quite glad I played it in that respect. And it's always good to play a game that you don't enjoy because you can just sort of dissect it in that kind of way. Um, but yeah, hashtag fuck ice monsters. Because <laughs> they're not good. As a, they're not a good ice, plot twist. There's really an bad. ice monster listening to this podcast right now that was like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, and my friend spent ages trying to like fight it like a boss battle before he realized before I told him that you can't kill it and you have to run away spoiler alert whoa um, yeah. it's not really a, I don't think you can spoil shit games and that's what I think I don't think you can spoil shit games because <laughs> no one's going to play it so you, just, you never know it's on the Playstation store but why Surprising. it actually made it but to the why? Playstation store I don't know that's Playstation store has been really weird recently did you see like there was the the Tiger game. Um, no. You play. It was called like something, something Black Tiger, and you play a tiger hunting down humans, and it looks like it was made in my basement for ten pounds, <laughs> and it somehow got into PlayStation, got onto the PlayStation Store. I, I, it's just a joke. It's just terrible. The PlayStation bad. Store's turning into. It doesn't Steam. even have it's like when worried. you run. It doesn't have. 360 um, movement. You can only move up, backwards, left, right, and then like in those diagonals between. So your character model like flicks between them. And I haven't seen a video game that does that for like 15 years. <laughs> I haven't seen that since old school RuneScape. Exactly. Old and it made school. it onto the PlayStation Store. I don't know how we did it. It was it's incredible. Wow! Wow! Um, those controls. And then there was another. There was another one. Like there was supposed to be like a Dark Souls clone, and all it is is you running to like, you start off in an empty village. You run to a building. A skeleton spawns, and it. And then you fight it, and then you go to. When you beat it, you go to the next building. The, a skeleton spawns. You fight it, and that happens seven times, and then you win the game. And that got onto the PlayStation Store, and I don't. So I don't really know what PlayStation has been doing recently. Um, they've been doing some shady deals somewhere along the line. This is this is all very depressing. That's all I can tell you right now. That's this is all very <laughs> depressing. It's like I don't know why, but it's becoming Steam. They're just letting any game on, and it's not a good look. That needs to stop because that's oh wow, wow. Life uh. of Black Tiger, I think it was called. Life, Life of Black that's Tiger. A- that's a lazy ass name. Here it is, yeah, got it. It Life was, it, it was the released ma- this year in Meta. January. It has no. a it has one review on Metacritic and it got a one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it has multiplayer, apparently. Oh, so all of your friends can suffer with hilarious. you. Hilarious. Um just fantastic. Yeah. That's pretty much everything I've been playing. Oh, that's that. Um, wow. 
I did. I did name a few things before you appeared, Eddie. Sorry, but I'm not going to repeat all that because. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I just, just wow. From what I've heard, you you have not had a good week. But all right then. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but David, have, have you said what you've been playing? No. No. Oh. As you were talking, please. I've just completed the Ultra Street Fighter 2 on the Switch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just watching out the oh, okay. uh, sound uh, engineer. Uh, David. Yes, yes. Uh, Nintendo Switch out of 10, what would you give it? I'd give it six donkeys. Six donkeys out of 10. Nice. What Controls are a little bit weird, <laughs> fine. A bit small for my liking. Yeah, it's baby buttons. A bit, bit weird. The analog sticks are in odd places as well. I find them like um, when I want to transfer my thumb to fr- from the D pad or the A B X Y buttons or whatever they're called to the other analog stick. I find myself like fumbling and just not being good at it, and that's bad. I think. <laughs> A lot of people say there's not a lot to play on the Switch. So what would you say? What, what would you? What would I say? Right, let's go to the games that I've got, and I'll oh, I'll give you a quick. So Poyo Poyo Tetris. <clears throat> I played that. It's quite good. It is quite well, good, but Tetris. it's I can I can play Tetris, but I can't play Poyo Poyo because I'm colour blind. <laughs> Oh damn! Does it not? Does it not have a colorblind option? I don't know. Yeah, you just didn't check it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play it. That I was much. just, I was just playing it, and it was like, oh, there's a blue one. No, that's pink. No, oh, there's a blue one. No, that's purple. Oh, Snipper clips, which has been getting loads of good reviews. I think it's one of the worst games I've ever played. <laughs> then there's Snake Pass. Which is a good, fun little platformer, puzzle platformer game. Oh, oh I saw, po- saw people play. Oh, um, have, I, did, have, did, have I told you that I work at Sega at the moment? No. I work at Sega as a video game tester at the moment. Sega. Ooh, fun. Sega. And I saw people testing that Snake Pass game. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. Um, and they did not look like they were having fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing to do with Sega, I don't think, the game. Unless I'm thinking of something else. I might be thinking of something else. Unless they uh, might have some uh, they're thinking about doing and they were just playing the game and getting all the ideas from it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so um, that's what everyone does. <laughs> I think it is this game. I'm fairly certain it is this game. You long snake you got to, like, try and get stuff. Snake pass. So i got a couple of the Neo Geo classics. i got Samurai Showdown 4 and the King of Fighters 98. They're good games. Nice. Nice. i got the Fast RMX, or Fast Remix, if you want to be pedantic. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it, it basically is probably the best, one of the best Wii U games being ported across and updated. Because it was Fast Racing Neo on the Wii U. I've got Mario oh, okay. Kart 8, which is good until you get into a certain part of the game and then they just chuck blue bloody homing missiles at you every 10 seconds. <laughs> and that pisses you off. <laughs> Super Bomberman R and that game should be like an eight pound download. But oh no, it's fifty quid. But it's just Bomberman. You only you only do one thing. You bo- you literally just drop bombs. Yeah, but I had to test stuff out. Um, I got Blaster Master Zero, which is an old school type shoot 'em up sort of thing. Got Zelda, which I will say, even though I don't really like Zelda, this version of Zelda is probably the one of the best games I've ever played. 
Bloody hell. High praise Every, indeed. Everyone is saying that, actually. Everyone is saying how good the new Zelda is. And then I've got NBA Playgrounds, which is Wait, just what? basically like a new NBA jam. Two on two arcade basketball. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And again, that's quite fun until they get towards the end of the the game, and then all of a sudden... And then they throw blue shells at you. They just push you over all the time, and then they can do, like, perfect shots. And in this <laughs> game, if you do a perfect shot, you get an extra point. So instead of a oh, okay. instead of a basket being worth two points, you get three points. Or a three-pointer, you get four points. Right. So basically... Mm. They can just like push you, grab the ball, and do a basket. And before you know it, they're like twenty points in in front. And that's not fun. (laughs) (laughs) I bought one of my games of last year, Thumper, which I absolutely adore that game. And I've got Ultra Street Fighter Two, which technically. Is okay. It's not quite as good as the Street Fighter 2 remix that came out for the 360 and the PS3 all those years ago. It's missing mm-hmm. some animation from the backgrounds and stuff. And the Street Fighter remix on the Xbox was like £10, I think it was. This game's £35. Wow. So I think they're all just doing what's called the Nintendo tax. <laughs> Digital store- storefronts are terrible at the moment. Yeah. On PlayStation, uh, I've noticed they're really bad. New games are like 60 quid a pop. Yeah. It's like, really? I can do- go down to Sainsbury's and get it for like 42 quid. This is why I usually buy most of my games from Amazon. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Amazon are fantastic. Yeah, yeah but... So I- they- like if you order on, it on the Switch, I wanted to go completely digital. I didn't want to carry any cartridges. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the whole point for going digital is like to minimise this to be really convenient, and then also from a selling perspective, you don't have to ship the games. You don't have to pay for like materials and packaging stuff like that. H- handling what scares and then, me and more expensive is the fact. I actually bought Zelda from Amazon, and that's the one cartridge game that I've got, so that just sits in the machine. On the eShop, the game is fifty nine ninety nine. Fuck me! And I, I got it from Amazon for forty two quid. Exactly. That's insane. Jesus. That's ridiculous. It's like that's, how is oh, that wow. possible? That's a large drop right that's there. Terrible. But people must be like buying or uh, buying on digital, like that. Because you can pre-order on digital now as well, can't you? And then you can like preload it. Not on the yeah. Switch. <laughs> not oh, not on the Switch. Okay. <laughs> you can click on "I'm interested in this" and they'll notify you when it comes out. <laughs> Dude, on, I can do that on my phone. I love I can it. it on my phone. They're just like I can preload on my phone. They're like mm. Nintendo are like um, how the 70s used to see the future, if that makes sense. A bit where people would think... Um, you see how, how like, Star Trek yeah, was always forward-thinking. The, the te- technology's there, but it's just not user-friendly. You just can't use it properly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll get this phone out. Insane. Clonk. <laughs> yeah, like how in, like, um, in, in films like Alien... Where all of the computers are like they look really futuristic, but all they are is like really shitty text on a tr- on a screen. Yeah, and that's what that's what Nintendo is. It's like a Vic they think 20. they're really really futuristic, <laughs> but really they just don't know how to do anything. Pretty much. <laughs> I will say one thing though. For a basic Android tablet, I think it's actually built quite well. Well, the idea is good. I do. I yeah. under, I understand the idea of it. Like the. The Switch is basically what Android has been, what various like different companies have been trying to do for a long time, which is make a tablet type of console. So they tried it with the Shield, they've tried it with, like, Razer tried it, I think, if I remember correctly, and, like, you know, everyone's tried it before. Nintendo's 
and Nintendo's basically done it right. I don't see how much different it, like how I don't know how good it is because I haven't touched one. I haven't touched one. I haven't played one. I'm not going to. But I don't know how good it is, so I can't really say. But to me, it seems decent as a console, kind of. <laughs> kind of, because okay, you have the dock, right? You can just plug, you can like put it in there, and then you play on the TV. If I can do that, why would I take it portable? Because portable only has what three to two hours of battery. I'm not. If I take it somewhere, I'm not going to be playing just for three to two hours. I'm not going to be playing for ten minutes and turn it off. Eddie, that's kind of boring. Yes. Since I've had the the switch, I think I've had it docked twice. Dude. I must say, everyone that I know who has a Switch doesn't dock it. Everyone plays what? it handheld. And this is what, I think so it runs better saying, handheld as well. That's, I believe oh, it, it runs better handheld. That's depressing. Then just call it, then call it a handheld. Don't call it a console. <laughs> if, Wait, so if you it can do both. But it can't, though. If it runs better as a handheld, then it's a handheld. Well, no, you can't say, oh, yeah, this is a handheld on a console, but it runs terribly as a console, runs better as a handheld. The problem is, they can't say it's a handheld, because then they'll eat it into their own 3DS sales. But the, so this but is their new console that you can take out on the go. But it's better than the 3DS. When you have a console that's better than the 3DS, that's when the 3DS dies. Did the 3DS die? Yeah, but the this... problem is the 3DS has sold 80 million consoles. But I'm they want to you, milk you... money on games. And that's what I'm saying. If you were like, all of the games that were on the 3DS will go into the Switch and the Switch is on a new handheld, they would sell so fast, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have enough factory Eddie. to make more. <laughs> Eddie, do you understand economy? If there's 80 million consoles Mostly. out, or there's two million consoles out and the game right. sells to 50% of the audience who's going to make more money? True but give them a you reason know? to buy the new console they'll do it give people like most people I know bought, bought the um, Switch purely for Zelda that's, that's, that's the only reason they bought it they, <laughs> they haven't well bought any other game <laughs> that's it that's it that's the only reason they bought the damn thing if Zelda wasn't out when the Switch came out the Switch wouldn't have sold anything within the, the first week. The problem is, though, people have and really short memories. I mean, like, when the 360 came out, what games were on that? There was, like, a FIFA Road to World Cup 06. I believe that was terrible. It, at the time, I loved it, but I played it recently, and, yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> 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 but... You, any new console, it takes like oh, outfit, six months. Do you remember Outfit? That was a that was a 360 launch title, I think. Yes, oh that was like Sega. That was... that was. Was it really? I'm sure it was Sega. <laughs> I about that. that wasn't that wasn't a good game. I remember <laughs> really enjoying it, but I played it again, and I was like, "What? What? What, what did I see in this?" <laughs> yeah. Honestly, the only game I enjoyed. On Crackdown was Crackdown a launch title? No, no. That was so. No, it wasn't. Okay. So. No, because it came with the. Like, you got the beta for the Halo oh, 3. Halo 3 beta, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. That's the only reason why it sold. That was amazing. That was a great time. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> what a time to be alive. I can't so, yeah, so... Any other free I mean, I've, launch times. I've technically played some other games on the PS4, but I've completely blanked on the names of them, so I can't be bothered. <laughs> Perfect. One was a platformer. We interviewed the, one of the developers last week's on last week's show. He gave me a code to play. I'm glad that Chris is doing the review because I wouldn't have been as favor favorable. <laughs> oh God! Say nice things. Say nice things. We need more people to interview. That's all right. We've got a two-hour <laughs> interview booked, ready to go up next week. It's fine. Oh God. It's already recorded. I've edited it down to one hour and a half. An hour, it was just 30 minutes, just taken out. Well, no, because we were talking about stuff that wasn't broadcastable. <laughs> and I don't want to know. Alright then.
Yeah. So what, are we going to get a director's cut of that then? Just like the, the hidden 30 minutes? No, no, it was basically, it was going to Pixel Heaven 17 today. And he was like booking his tickets online. And he kept saying his credit card details and stuff. <laughs> so I said, like, yeah, I'll just cut that out. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's, that's great. That's fine. <laughs> Does anyone want any new stuff I can get? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not going to say it out loud. That's fine. Um, <laughs> I'm, I don't want to be connected to this right now. <laughs> I don't want to be connected to this right now. <laughs> right, oh, then. Eddie, Eddie, I get the hint. You want a new connect. Huh? <laughs> a new what? I have no idea what you're talking about. You said you didn't want to be connected, so you want a new connect. I, I just went partially deaf. I went partially deaf for like five minutes. I didn't hear a damn thing. Remember when Connect came out? Oh, what a time to be alive. Oh my god. That was People the fastest selling add on of all time. I know. People loved that bloody thing. They were Project like, Natal. Oh, I remember when it was Project Natal as well. Oh my Ma- god. Project, was it Milo? A little Milo kid? Yeah, and then it you changed could, like, to Milo and Kate. And then he got cancelled. And then, and then he disappeared. He got taken to the back office and retired. Yeah. I love how quickly as well that just... I love how quickly people change their minds about Connect. Do you know what? It was like, uh I still love the Connect Sports. I still think that's a good game. It's actually a really good game, yeah. <laughs> it's the best thing about it, though. That's the only thing... Like, I think that's the only good thing that came out of the Connect. Oh, there was Dance Being Central. Sports with it. Well, let's, let's just say, like... Sport, like, Dance Central's kind of iffy because no one really wants to wants to flail around like an idiot for 30 minutes listening to Katy Perry 12 year old girls do that's depressing <laughs> how you know that as well is kind of I'm, mm, how do you have this information hey, I've, got, get... I've got my own research facility and I just <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> no God, no oh please say you're joking just, just say it for the courts later. <laughs> I'm going to move the conversation quickly on. <laughs> and I think, what like tomorrow, we're just, we're just going to see in the news they found five teenage it's girls true. in David's basement. <laughs> oh god! I was going to say something else, but I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> nope, you got to say it. You got to say it. I was going to say at people. least they found the teenage ones. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> So, Zach, what were you going to say? <laughs> uh, I mean... Oh, God. Where do we even go from here? <laughs> Nowhere. Eddie, oh, look, Eddie, Eddie was on the Connect. Go. Oh, my God. Are there any others? Launch oh. titles. Yeah. I think... Rise of think... Nightmares. That was a launch title, wasn't it? Uh, no, I think that came out about a year later, I think. Oh, damn it. Or was it a launch title? I don't, that, that was Sega as well. <laughs> Sega are not having a good run, are they? No, <laughs> no they are not. Yeah. Sega hasn't made a good game in a very long time, actually. Alien Isolation? That wasn't a good game. Are you joking? No, I that hated was, it as well. It was, Why am I even on this podcast? It wasn't a good game. It was a it fantastic game. It wasn't. It, it wasn't. Was. It was literally you running away from an NPC that has godlike powers. Exactly. That that's, that's not a fun game. That's literally... That's, <laughs> you can do it of any other characters and it would be shit. The only reason people liked it is because it was alien. That's it. The, the, the license carried the entire game. Oh, absolutely. It actually does. Like, exactly. That, that means so it's still, it's still a, a good game. game. It's, it's a, a good game. game. It's it is not. a good game. It's a fantastic no, it's game. It's, it's not. a fantastic game. It's really not. It's five and a half Freddy's, but you can walk around. So, Connect Adventures? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it was like the adventure thing that came bundled with it, where you had to duck and dodge. Oh, Fable. Duck and dodge. And then there was Fable Connect Journey. Joyride. <laughs> Oh, Fable. Oh, my word. What a depressing... Does anyone remember Fable Journeys? I think yes. that's what it's called. I think it's Journey. Yeah, I, I have that was an that. awful idea. That was an awful idea. Your shares, so Fitness much. Evolved. Fable franchise was just... It just took a massive downturn after Fable 3. It was just... Oh, oh. my word. 
One of the they best games ever created. Connectimals. Wait, what? Connectimals. <laughs> Connect- Dance Central. <laughs> that lineup. No. Was... My word. And I think that was just like the first party stuff, apart from one of the Ubisoft games. Wait, Zach, did you just say a wang up? What? Did you just did you, did you just say wang up? No, I didn't. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, yeah, you I'm, sure? I'm 100% certain I definitely did not say that. I, I don't even know what I said, but I definitely didn't say that. I don't even know Someone what that replay means. it. Someone replay it, because I <laughs> definitely heard that. I can't, because this is gold. <laughs> Eddie, what have you oh, been playing? Oh. Okay, um... What have, I, what have I been playing? I don't I know, that's why I asked you. For the anniversary. The anniversary event that's going on, it's not. It's not that good. It's still just Overwatch. Nothing's changed. Yay! And then um, I've been talking. Should I talk about the events I went to? Fuck it. I'm going to talk about the events I went to. Go on. Um, I went. I've, okay. I've been to what three now. So first one was the Get Even event. That was fucking amazing. It was an amazing event. It was so. It was so well done. It's like actually kind of blew me away a bit. So, Eddie. <laughs> yeah. Were these the events that I got you into? Oh, yeah. Did you record yeah. any video footage that we could use, or...? No. And there's a very good reason, but I'm going to, which I'm going to explain in a second. So basically, this is what happens, this is what happens. So I'm just going to sit back and relax. The Get uh. Even event was in Pinewood, right? It's in Pinewood Studios. And to get to Pinewood, you have to get a specific bus. And that specific bus does not take Oyster cards. So no, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm in Uxbridge. I'm in Uxbridge, and I'm just I'm just sitting there like, well, shit, I'm stuck. Until I'm until me and another guy, another person who's going there at the same time, named John, great dude, yeah. So we're like, fuck it, we're getting an Uber. We get an Uber, we get there, and the first, and it's all it's all very like you know posh and whatnot. And as usual, I'm the only black guy. It's very nice. So. We're all, everyone's just drinking free beer, free food, and there's free wine. So I can't really complain. They, they, already, they already have my 10 out of 10. So, like, don't even need to show me the game at this point. But we go into, like, a big theater, like a, like a cinema-type theater. And the person that talks to us isn't the, isn't the creative director, isn't the designer. It's the composer. That was weird to begin with. The composer is the person telling us about the game. And the more they spoke about the game, the more I understood why the composer talked to us. Because it is batshit crazy. It makes no sense. The game makes no sense. How they made the game makes no sense. They even said it, it makes it makes very little sense. But it's like I I love how they did it. I loved I love how they presented the game, how they made the game. Because it's like for for them it was a very like you know. It was, it was basically a question of what can we do that no one else has done before and for them it was this it was basically a, it was basically the game get even a very weird game if you watch any of the trailers the game makes no sense from the trailers the game is very okay mm, just watch it three more times just to understand what's happening but the one thing the composer said to me that was actually kind of, that said like he said that was really weird very weird was that when he did the music for the game uh, like the game actually has no music in it like it has no actual like you know uh, like you know I don't know thriller music or like chase scene music none of that the entire it's all ambient noise the ambient noise is the music which I've never seen before so it's like um, the lights the wind, creaks, hissing pipes, they're all in a note, in a musical note. They're all in the same musical note, so they can all be C or they can all be D. And only and only like a couple people, a few people with like very that can recognize musical notes will actually hint on that, will actually get it. Which I found that's like a nice little touch that they put in, that's really kinda cool. But um the game's very odd. 
the game is very odd. The premise of the game is very odd. The um, I don't even know how much about the premise I can actually talk about because the embargo isn't over yet. But um, the premise is kind of odd, and er- and all of it's very weird. So I haven't played. I haven't touched the game yet. I haven't played the game yet. But um, the event was amazing. I can't. I, I'm going to keep saying the event was amazing because I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. it was great. It was fucking great. Like understand at the end of the event. They give <laughs> at the end of the event they give you a copy of the game in like a nice little like you know briefings folder, like your secret agent or some shit, and they give you a, f- a free pair of headphones, a free pair of eighty pound headphones. That's in, like why? If you want to bribe me, the the beer was enough. You don't have to give me this. You already have a ten out of ten. Fuck it, take it. And then, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Reviews I have I have one big ten out of ten. On it's the, only going on the website. <laughs> Understand the review's literally just going to be 10, and then slash 10, that's it. Buy the game. That's 10 out of 10, the headphones my... were good. <laughs> a free beer was great. <laughs> and then, like, it's cool, because it was like, but they had us in, like, um, like a small socialising area after, and it, was re- and it was really nice. Like, free food, free beer again. It was lovely. Met two, met two like, I met two beautiful Welsh girls, so <laughs> and honestly, woo, bells at the board. That's what I'm gonna say. Just mwah, lovely, but then like, <laughs> and then it's like you know, and I met like John YouTube. I met a YouTuber there as well, which is great. Like you, and this is one thing that I love about events: you meet people, you meet a lot of interesting people. And we all and we all felt the same thing. Like the game seems very interesting, and it seems worth playing. Like the story isn't generic, and the story isn't like, oh, I'm good guy, here are bad guys, bang bang, shoot dead, I win. It's very like there's there's something deeper to this that makes sense and that means something. And to understand it, you need to not just you know go through shooting shit. You have to play. I laughed so much if it had a plot twist. Where I would... the bad guy was a nice monster. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to I God, would I laugh God, so nice much. <laughs> if, if there was a nice monster, I swear to God, right now, eleven out of ten. <laughs> best game of the year. <laughs> game of the year. Don't care. Don't care. Oh my! Actually, that sounds kind of bad because I just ripped on the other game for having for having a nice monster. <laughs> oh. yes. Wait, they they it. didn't give you headphones and booze. They, they, exactly. they didn't bribe you. <laughs> people, people of the internet, if you want me to give your game a good review, booze and free food. There you go. Just get me an e I'll say whatever you want. And then, um, what was the other event? I went to another event, which was... Um, I don't even remember what it was. Oh, yeah, it was for, like, three different games. It was for three different games. But honestly, there were only two that I actually liked. And it was Excel, and I think the other one was called Battle Chasers. Battle Chasers is actually a very cool game. It's a very, very cool game, and I like it. Mostly because of the um, illustration. Mostly because of the illustration. The illustration is beautiful. Lovely, lovely illustration. And it's like... the It's kind of like a drawing. The game, the, most of the characters are hand-drawn or computer-drawn, and you're playing as them, and, you're go, and it's a turn-based... It's a turn-based um, combat game, which is kind of fun, kind of fun. But the best thing about it is, it's like you're playing through the game, and the first thing you do for this demo is you go into a dungeon, and the dungeon is so goddamn difficult. It is so goddamn difficult, because like me being me, I wanted to see what it would be like at the harder difficulties. So I played the harder difficulties, and I got to the final boss. And he can one-shot any member of your team from the strongest to the weakest like it's nothing. And it's not even like, oh, it's a ridiculous, um, like, it's a ridiculous curve in difficulty. No, it's just you have to pay attention. You have to just learn how to play. And I like difficulty to curves like that. It's like you learn how to play, you learn what you're doing. You, you know, go through the game. That's lovely. That That's how more games should be because it's like, I think a lot of games are just like, oh, it's really easy at the beginning, and then you get to the middle, and you die instantly for some reason, and you don't fully understand why. 
in this it's like the, you have to plan, you have to go through the game, you have to buy potions, you have to, you know, do shit. You can't just run through, which I honestly like. And then there was another game which I th- I think was called um, XL XL, something like that. And it was it was very weird. Ugh. It was it was a game that I think seemed like an a Steam early access game. And I don't think that is a good thing to say, but honestly, that's what it, that's what it was. Um, it was it was a good it was a fun experience to play, but I wouldn't play it again. I wouldn't play it again, and it's purely because it tries to be a lot. It tries to be a lot of things, and it tries to do a lot of things that it doesn't do well. Again, I don't know how much I can say. Embargo isn't over yet, but. Um, It doesn't do a lot of things well. And I think its main problem is it doesn't concentrate on any one thing. It just tries to do everything. And that can be a problem if your game isn't good. But yeah, and then the other event is Comic-Con, which still isn't over while when we're recording this. It's day two, going on to day three. So yeah, Comic-Con. It was interesting. I went into the... um, Tekken 7 press tournament lost instantly because I'm suave like that. You know what it is? I could have just lied and said I won and no one could say shit. <laughs> but yeah, I, I didn't think that through. No, it was good. It was actually good. Like a lot of the guys were really good. You could, you noticed, like you could see who had actually been practicing. There was one guy who actually came with, a, with his own um, fight stick, which... And he lost instantly as well, which is... Like, oh, my God. That's a bit, that's a bit <laughs> anti-climactic, isn't it? That's pretty you bad. Have, you have your, like, Tekken fight stick, and it's just like, oh, you just got wiped. You got wiped by a panda bear. Fuck me. But, yeah, that that happened. That, that was weird. It was actually kind of fun. It was actually kind of fun going, going to Comic-Con, doing all this shit. Like... I mostly just like walked around seeing all the different games and stuff. Machinima had like an, an entire small thing going on, like an entire like event, like a small square to themselves, which was kind of cool. They had like rock band going on and stuff, and then you have like you have you have like an entire Tekken thing going on. You have uh, Agents of Mayhem. They had their own, they had their own thing like they like a big walled off thing that was going on. It was actually I don't know. It's Comic Con. Like, what else can you say, really? Let's be honest. And again, Comic Con. Like, what you go to Comic Con for three things: comic books, games, and ladies in cosplay. And what can I say? I met a lot of beautiful ladies in cosplay. Like, goddamn. Oh, 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 Casanova. This week, Jesus. Actually, no, Casanova's a bad thing. I swear, I'm pretty sure he dies at the end of his story. Ooh. We all die at the end of our story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's depressing. It depends how many people <laughs> and string you up there. But like, shit. I'm talking about like meeting beautiful ladies, and you're like, oh, we're all gonna die. Like, fuck me, man. Jesus. Look, we should all be nihilists. The world oh, would be such okay. a place. We're all nihil- nihilists like me. That makes sense. I'm just quickly. I, this is gonna sound. This is gonna be like such a douchebag thing to say. But I'm just. I, I'll just keep shout- going. Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna do shout-outs because literally we need to fill time anyway. Almost, We've been going almost, an hour and a half already. <laughs> fuck me, really? Shit. <laughs> Christ. All right. Well, that's nothing. New. I'm gonna do like a few quick shoutouts, and really quick. Shout out to John for paying for everything, like my Uber, <laughs> and <laughs> and my page, and you let me pay you back with lunch. Love it. <laughs> Go check out his YouTube. Um, game gamer gamer forever. I think that's what it is. It's like it's over a hundred thousand subscribers. He doesn't need help, but like, still go. How, like, you know, if you want to see an Asian guy play games, there he is. He's the he, he's the Oriental Asian one, not the other Asian one. He's the good one with the long hair that looks like an Asian cowboy. Doesn't make sense. And then what else? My two Cardiff girls, the ones I met at Pinewood. Jesus, you're beautiful. Um, who else? <laughs> Uh, damn, I don't know who else. Oh, yes, everyone that everyone that now knows my nickname as Black Thunder. <laughs> you know. Come on. Yeah. You love it. 
<laughs> yeah, love it. Yeah, that's that's been how I've, I've been introducing myself to people. Um, <laughs> 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 Probably not the best career move. But fuck it, it works. It works. It gets people. It gets people smiling and laughing. So it's good. It's it's a good thing. That's what I tell myself. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think that's all the shout I, I need to do. That's all the shout I need to do. I want to do. There you go. Shout out to my friend who works at Pinewood. I have a friend that works at Pinewood. You have a friend that works? Motherfucker? Yeah. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's actually it's kind of cool. cool yeah. Pinewood is actually a very cool place because it it's is. where English comedy was made. That's like where English comedy was top tier. Like with the Carry On films. That was top tier English comedy. And now... We we, can't, we don't have much. Let's be honest. We don't have much. We're not that funny anymore. We're just sad mostly. Like the funniest thing in England is probably Graham Norton, and that's a depressing thing to say. And Isn't he from the out. Republic of Ireland? <laughs> oh, that's even worse. <laughs> even I was going to say that. <laughs> we don't even have funny people of our own. We have to import them over. We have to import them. We're stealing more things from the Irish. It's oh, like, it's like when to. people say that Piers Bronson, Bros, Brosnan, Bronson, whatever his name is. Bronson. <laughs> the guy who played 007. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People say he's the, one of the best English actors. So, no, he's Irish. You see, this is the thing. We England has so few funny people, we have to start taking them from other places and just saying they're English. That's just what we're doing now. It's it's sad. It's so sad. But hey, what can you do? At least we try. We're good at lying. We have hot fuzz. Oh, wow. Well, hot fuzz is funny. Like it's a one few of the best times. Made, mate. True, but put it like this: hot fuzz is only funny at specific moments. But if you've seen it so many times, you you already know what's going to happen. It stops being funny. There's a point where it stops being funny. Only a few points that's, are actually that's, funny. That's not a problem with like comedy or films or entertainment. <laughs> if you've seen it enough so, times, it's it stops like being entertaining. There is one film that will always be funny, and no one can say otherwise. Like I, I defy you to tell me I'm wrong. Coming to America. That is actually quite good. I like that. It's a the original aeroplane, that's still good. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Team yep, America. Yep. Oh. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like I'm Team America. Me. I've never watched the full thing. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, uh, David, I feel like you'd love it. It feels it feels like it might be the puppets for you. I don't I don't think you'll find the puppets funny. I loved the South Park movie. I thought that was really good. Exactly. Oh, yeah. 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 So, I mean... It's similar, similar kind of comedy, isn't it? So, but is it, and that's the thing, though. Like, there's not a lot of good comedies anymore. Not really. Like, what's the funniest thing to come out like this year? This year? Yeah. I've already seen one film at the cinema this year. It's pretty bad, isn't it? <laughs> Let's be honest. No one in our generation watches movies at at the cinema anymore. <laughs> I do. <laughs> And then they yeah, get home and uh, pirate the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you, can you say that a bit louder? I don't, I don't think the police heard you. They just, they just need another recording for court, that's all. <laughs> oh, God. But it's like, I don't know, there's nothing good. Nothing good has come out this year. Oh, not really. Nothing funny has come out this year. You have Guardians of the Galaxy, but that's going to be funny regardless. He has a fucking talking raccoon. If that wasn't funny, it'd be depressing. Like, okay, this may this is this this may be this may be something that um not everyone agrees with. I love Boss Baby. Not saying I love it. it. I haven't the seen movie it. The Boss Baby, I love it. It is hilarious. Wasn't that like a joke trailer from like one of the Simpsons episodes like twenty years ago? Probably, but yeah, God, yeah, it was. Yeah, <laughs> it, is, it is one of the funniest <laughs> movies I have seen in a very long time. And there's literally in I think I think in like what 30, 30 20, wait, yeah, 30, 35 minutes in, yeah, there is a <laughs> there's a blowjob joke, and it is the funniest fucking thing. It's the funniest fucking thing. 
I swear, is the funniest thing that I've seen that I've seen in a movie made for children oh, in a very long the time. The funniest thing. It's great. It's great. It's great. I can't. It's just wonderful. It's a wonderful thing to see. But other than that, I think the I think the only comedies that have come out have been Lego Batman, which let's be honest wasn't that funny. I've not seen it. It, it wasn't. I didn't think the Lego much. movie was really good. Well, the Lego movie I loved was... the Lego movie, personally. I thought it was the really, really good. The Lego movie was good for it. it was good because it's like... It was something that a lot of people hadn't seen before. But with Lego Batman, it was just... Oh, remember the Lego movie? Cool. But now it's Batman. And it's less funny. And it's the yeah. entire movie plot you, yeah. is literally about... It's, the, the entire movie is literally... I shit you not, it's literally about how Joker wants to be Batman's main boo. I shit you not. He hurts Joker's feelings because he says, he tells Joker he's, he is not his main villain. He's not his, like, you know, super bad guy. And Joker's just like, oh. And he starts crying and shit and then makes an army of his own. It's such bullshit. It is such... It's like it. Uh, the comedy is so stupid. It's, the jokes are so stupid. It's just uh, it's depressing. It's I know. Depressing I know movie. why he didn't like it. Why? It didn't have that blowjob joke within the first thirty minutes. Exactly. That. That's what I'm saying. You want to make me laugh? <laughs> Talk about a second bit in the first thirty minutes. Boom. Ready. I'm giggling like a bitch already. It's done. <laughs> but wait. What well, else has come out this year that has that's actually been funny? Let's be honest. Uh, like I said I've only seen one film this year, and that's Guardians. Oh, actually, yeah. well, how 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 was Guardians? I haven't seen it yet. It's very very good. I really really liked it. Um, mm-hmm. I can't decide whether it's better than the first one, mainly because I've only seen the first one once at the cinema, and I never watched it again. But I remember really mm-hmm. enjoying it. But okay. it's very very good. I really really liked it. I liked um, the first one, but I didn't think much happened. I think I only liked it when he started yeah, dancing, kind of like a... and he says, "What are you doing?" Go, you know, some, you know, just that. dance well. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it 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 did a lot of things. No, wait. Let me let me start there again. <laughs> Not a lot happened, but it seems to be because they like tried to introduce what? How many? There's five of them in that film. Five guardians. Yeah. Into one film there to jam it all in, and they did that quite well. You know what the director I, I never said. I saw it being very good at. Um, exactly. You know what the director it. said after the first sort of like screening. What? So, so about jamming. Wait, what? What? <laughs> what? I want to go to bed. <laughs> You're so. Honestly, I don't know if you're wasted or just tired. I'm knackered. Tired. So a bit of both. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that was a yawn. Oh Christ! I wanted oh, to go dude. see Power Rangers, but no one would see it with me. No. Let's let's be honest right now. No. No one's gonna watch Power Rangers. I believe. No. I believe there's a new one coming out. Why? I believe it's been greenlit. For a second, why? Week. Why? And Tommy's coming back, which oh, I'm very fuck. excited about personally. No, no. <laughs> that guy, literally, that guy has been trying so hard to live off the fame of the but role he's, he did he, like he, twenty years he ago. He would be in it. Oh, did you hear it? the that, the actor that played Tommy got chucked out with the screening of Power Rangers because <laughs> he like because he's in the Power Rangers film, but not as Tommy. He's like in a throwaway cameo. And Seriously. when he came up on screen, he, he stood up in his screening and tried to take a picture of all the people watching it to get a picture of their reactions, and then security chucked him out. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> oh, you can only it's fall so hard. It's just stupid thing to do. You, can, just, you, oh, you, can't, you can only fall so hard, honestly. You can only fall so hard. I know. Jesus. Fucked him. And did you hear there was a Power Ranger recently got jailed for killing his roommate? Oh, 
Which one was that? He played uh, the Red Ranger in Wild Force. Yeah, he stabbed him with the yeah, sword or something. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, shit. Sent to jail. Well, you know. I only found out about that because I was in discussions with the guy who played the Black Ranger, is it Walter Summit? The original oh, Black Ranger. Um, to do a voice in a cartoon series. And that's when I found out that the Yellow Ranger died in a car crash in 99, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. And the, that one got stabbed. I was like, oh God. So I think with that, please visit our website, oneupgaming.co.uk. If you like our very random talk, <laughs> please donate to our Patreon site, patreon.com slash O-U-G. We have official merchandise over at bluecyborg.com, just search 1upgaming. We have Facebook and YouTube and Twitch. Easiest place to find them is either just search 1upgaming or go to our website and they'll have tabs at the top of the page that will take you straight to them. If you want to tweet us it's at OUG official and if you want to email us it's contact at oneupgaming.co.uk please subscribe and give positive feedback on our iTunes or any other service that you use to download us with and that will do for episode 201 and considering it was going to be a quick episode it's been like an hour and 20 minutes And when we get started, you just can't, it's hard to stop the train of thought in it. That's I, what happens when we I, I, I've, I've, I've completed Street Fighter twice, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. So, so, bye. No. <laughs> <laughs> Later, dudes. Bye. Bye. I think everyone should follow the Twitter account and start tweeting us how much oh, yeah, they um, think um, they love Eddie. Oh yeah, tweet, tweet, tweet us and like just put the hashtag Black Thunder and just I'll, I'll see it. I swear, I'll see it. <laughs> he searches it every day on Twitter anyway. Every day, every day. Yep. <laughs> it would do wonders for our ego. Oh yeah. Actually, wait, we need to give Zach... I know, I need it. We need, to, we need to give Zach something. White lightning. White <laughs> lightning. Yes. 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 There we go. White lightning. <laughs> Simple. That's a really cheap alcoholic drink. It is. I'm okay with that too. What a great drink. <laughs> Sends me back to my youth. It does. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, Jesus. All right. No, we're going. Bye, everyone. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Justin here. I just wanted to say that I've been thinking about you. I've been thinking about you a lot. Yes, you in particular, in that way. And I wanted to say, I think you're great. I've always said that about you. And I was wondering, if you think we're great, if you could give us a quick rating on iTunes, we'd really appreciate it. It would really, really help us out in that, you know, podcasty sort of way. And if you're feeling particularly festive, perhaps even a little saucy, maybe stop by our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash O-U-G and see if you can't slip a few bucks our way. After all, every little penny or whatever space money they use in Europe helps out the show. Thanks for listening. O-U-G Gaming will always be free, but with your support, we can always move forward and always be better.